Obi-Wan Kenobi Season 1. Um, technically, the show was announced as a miniseries, but there is rumblings there could possibly be a Season 2, so it's Obi-Wan Kenobi Season 1. This is the full spoiler review. Um, I have a review on my blog, soundofbettermyhead.com. I try not to get too many spoilers in there. There's definitely a couple, but it's a lot cleaner than this one's going to be. I end up going with a 3 out of 5 on this series. And this is mostly coming from a hardcore Star Wars fan. I think if you're not that into Star Wars or if you really don't care for the prequels especially, I don't think you're going to enjoy this show as much. The thing with the show is it's basically it's a story that nobody was asking for. You know, everyone was pretty content with you had Revenge of the Sith and Kenobi and Vader fought and Vader got maimed and turned into like the version of Vader that we know. Only one stayed on Tatooine to keep eye on Luke. And then 19 years later, he had to go on this mission to stop, help stop the Death Star. And everyone was pr pretty happy that he, he figured he had some little shenanigans why hanging out in Tatooine. But for the most part, there's nothing really worth mentioning. I, I would say this is purely a cash grab. This is Disney saying we have the rights to these characters. We can make the money off of it. So, um, you know, let's find a way to do it. Uh, that said, I think I think it was, they, did, they did a pretty good job overall with coming up with a good story. You have uh, Princess Leia being kidnapped. She's only 10 years old at this point. So you have Obi-Wan forced out of retirement and going out to rescue her, which that's as good as any motivation is going to get. Um, the other problem is that this show is really billed as the big rematch between Kenobi and Vader, even though all the dialogue and the original Star Wars implied that this they didn't see each other for like almost 20 years and they, they finally fight on the Death Star. This show is saying, nope, there's another fight they had you guys didn't know about. Um, that's what we're going to show you. It's all going to be building up to this. But a lot, and that's there, but a lot of stuff is really heavily focused on the new character of the third sister, a.k.a. Riva. And... There was a lot of people who also had a problem with this character online. She got a lot of negative buzz. I was fine with the character. It was pretty obvious early on, partially what her motivation was. You could, it's a pretty good guess that she was one of the younglings in the flashback at the beginning. And now she turned to the dark side. It was definitely a better twist later on that we found out she was trying to get close to Vader so she could get her revenge. Which, again, it, it came a little too late for the audience, but at least you see why she's so gung-ho about doing all this. Um, but her story, they said her, her, she's basically the big bad over Vader. I mean, Vader's still like boss level, but she's kind of the main bad guy. And when she butts head with Kenobi, it's not the same. She's not really after Kenobi. He's just a means to an end. So it really never, there's no connection between these two, you know, as protagonist and antagonist, it's it's all about Kenobi and Vader, and since we don't really get that, it's kind of disappointing. Um, I think it's most obvious at the end because you, you get your big showdown, you got Kenobi and Vader fighting it out, which is great, and you get this weird side plot where Reva has to go after Luke Skywalker and try to kill him as some kind of weird, you know, thing she got in her head. This is this is justice for the other Pada ones that got killed, the other younglings. And her character did need that arc. She, she needed to get to a point where she doesn't cross that final line and she comes back from the dark side. Her character did need that. I don't think the show needed that. I think somebody said it's almost like there was two different shows kind of crammed in here. I, I believe that. I think there was room for a, a redemption arc for you know a dark Jedi like Reba out there. And I think there's room for this Kenobi Vader grudge match, but I don't think they really mesh together. Like the whole time I'm watching Reba's story, I'm like, I don't care. I think also you got the fact that you know the old, you know the largest family is going to survive. You know Luke's going to survive, so it's, there's not really that much. You know, there's nothing really at stake. It's like it just taken away from the you know the big fight between Kenobi and Vader. Even though you know they're both going to survive as well, there's so much more emotion between these two characters. They got so much history. You know that makes it more interesting. Uh, Character-wise, like I said, Kenobi. Um, I think they did, they did a good job of him showing, showing him as basically, you know, rock bottom. He just, me, you know, meager lifestyle, just checking on Luke, goes to work, just doesn't give a shit about anything. 
doesn't want nothing to do with the Jedi, nothing to do with saving anybody. And as the series progresses, they did a great job of getting him back to being Kenobi and getting back to, you know, the hero that he should be. And I think that, I think all that worked pretty well. I think there were some people complaining early on about the version we got of Obi-Wan early, but I think that worked. Um, that also leads into the addition of Leia to the, so the story. Again, there's going to be obvious comparisons to the whole Mandalorian Grogu thing. You got a parent figure and a child figure, you know, bringing out the best in each other. Um, the Leia sub is something I got that I never knew I wanted. You know, just seeing those scenes with Leia and her, you know, Bail Organa and, and the Queen and, and Alderaan and how she was, you know, growing up and how she was with her family. It, it's... Luke was such a star of the original trilogy, like, people really didn't give a second thought to Leia. It's like, yeah, she grew up royalty, she became a senator, it's politics, who cares? But it was, it was just interesting seeing this part of her life that a lot of people didn't envision. And seeing this interaction between her family, and knowing, you know, more to their tragedy that they're not, they're not going to survive uh, past a certain point of episode four. Um, she didn't have that much of an arc. I mean, yeah, at the end she gained a little bit more confident with herself, I guess you could say. But her, she was more about changing Obi-Wan's arc from, you know, being down in the dumps to being back to where he should be. Uh, again, I said Reva had a, a decent story arc as well. It's been kind of done before. We've seen good characters fall to the dark side and redeem themselves either all the way or somewhat, you know, anything from Darth Vader himself to Kylo Ren to Asa's Ventress to uh, the third... The uh, second sister, um, this, but a lot of the music get killed off immediately. So it'd be interesting to see where this character goes now that she's redeemed and going back to the you know closer to the light side. And then you know, obviously you had Vader. There's not much of an arc there. I mean, you see that he's still as badass as he is here. He's the most powerful he's ever been. You'll still see those little some a little bit more signs of it. You know, the Anakin Skywalker in him. You still see him getting kind of schooled by Kenobi. See that he still hasn't quite learned, you know, the lessons from the past. But, you know, here he's still mostly here just to be an intimidating presence. I'm actually a little disappointed that when he did collide with Kenobi the few times they were together, there wasn't real, as much dialogue. I liked to, well, like to, to have him, certain things I would like to hear him say to each other. But really, they just kind of scrapped, to, you know, they talked a little bit of smack. That's about it. Um, I liked all the secondary characters. They didn't really get to do a ton on their own. Again, there's more about Obi-Wan's journey and how they added to it, but I like you know, all the you know, side characters for the most part. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up about Kenobi, it was also interesting seeing him, since he's trying to hide being a Jedi, you know, seeing him using a blaster left and right, hand-to-hand -hand combat, just seeing a side of Obi-Wan that we never saw before. The only downside is the lightsaber and all that Force stuff is what makes the character special. Like you, When you watch Star Wars, you watch it because they're space wizards and they're throwing people with their mind and they're using laser swords and that's really you know that's get your imagination running wild and instead it's this guy running around shooting people and it's, i said just kind of loses what makes him special even though it is nice seeing this different side of the character and seeing him have to you know live a different way of life um the show looked good overall i think there's some wonky cg sometimes some of the ships looked very cg sometimes the uh um, it's basically a camel-like character. I think it's called like an EOP. Um, so nice. That looks a little weird, especially when it's like drops down the little Obi-Wan went off. You can see it's CG. A lot of the scenes at night with the lightsabers, they just looked fake. Like, I know what they're doing a lot of these shows now is they actually have a light up prop lightsaber and then they just tweak it a little bit in the CG, but it gives it, it gives lighting to like the character that, you know, actually has actual light to the, to the set that's not there with his lightsaber in the old style of doing it. But at night, it looked like he was just holding a prop light saber. It looked like just, you know, didn't look like it was going to cut anybody. It didn't look real. It looked just, this didn't look right to me. Too smooth. Um, I thought a lot of the action sequences were really poorly executed. Anytime little Leia had run to run from somebody, it looked almost comical that they couldn't catch her. Um, there was a part where like 20 stormtroopers come down in this corridor and there's like a handful of people trying to hold them off and the stormtroopers are missing from point blank, which they're not trying to be funny. The stormtroopers just can't seem to kill anybody. Despite like overwhelming, you know, the odds. Um, there's a couple of fights. Like I said, some of the fight scenes are just really poorly done. Like, 
And those are some good ones. I liked the beginning, the Jedi Master defending the younglings. Um, the final fight between Kenobi and uh, Vader was pretty good. There's a couple wonky moments. There's some really cool stuff with the Reva versus Vader fight, fight but again, there's some weird wonky movements where she's kind of squatting down and this looked really awkward and she do like a weird roll. Like I, just something looked off about it. Um, most of the cool planets looked pretty cool, but like some of them, it was just basically look out like out in the middle of nowhere in California. Some of them looked just some random rocky terrain. Uh, in the end, you had Tatooine at night and this new planet at night, and they both looked similar enough that they cut between the Vader fight and the Reva Luke thing, and I wouldn't be sure where I was at for a couple minutes. They just weren't distinct enough, especially at night. But another thing, the, the acting overall solid. McGregor killed it like in so many times. I absolutely loved the moment he found out Vader was still alive. I loved the moment where he tried to apologize to Anakin at the end. Um, Reva, I think what sold her story, the storyline wasn't all that. And I thought it was a little unnecessary. Her acting really nailed it. I loved the moment where she you know, revealed that she was the, that young link from the beginning. I loved it the morning with the, at the end when she broke down that she thought she had betrayed, you know, getting revenge for her people. Um, I thought Leia was fantastic, you know, a little mature for her age, but still like a kid. Uh, speaking of age, one thing I thought was kind of weak, they didn't look like they put much effort into de-aging the characters. Um, I think I'll go through my notes here, see if there's anything else that I forgot about, even though I just said I was almost done talking about the show. Actually, one quick thing I did like, they did a little recap, almost like a previously on, and then just showed a bunch of clips from the prequels. I thought that was just a good way to Kind of get you pumped getting in the show. Maybe some stuff people would have forgot about. Uh, the scene in the first episode where Reva cuts off someone's hand. Like, silly like people should have been flipping out over this. Someone just got their hand chopped off. And just like, it was, there was like no crowd reaction. They were like, oh my god, well, okay. And then they just kind of stood there. Nice couple quick cameos about 3PO and R2 in that episode. Um, they were intentionally big about Leia. She seemed to be... She seems like she could have been using the force to kind of get a read on like people's because it's always implied that she's really empathetic and she could better at sensing emotions and sensing what people are about than like Luke ever was. And that just seems to always be like her default, you know, force setting. So it seemed like she was kind of reading people. Like I said, I think they kind of intentionally left it vague, but I thought that was really in line with their character. Uh, episode two, nice little move showing the Homeless clone trooper, you know, you already got Tamara, Tamara Morrison back with playing Boba Fett, so it was kind of cool, you know, find another use for him, let him play a clone trooper. Of course, if this poor guy would have realized who just gave him that money, he would have probably got up and tried to murder Obi-Wan, so that's a little depressing, I guess. Um, it's kind of weird that you got a character that's pretending to be a Jedi to basically get money from people. Granted, he's really trying to help them, but he's trying to get money. But in a world where, like, even the whisper of a Jedi being out there brings Inquisitors to, like, kill you. It seems like he would have put a target on himself and someone would have tracked him down. Especially, he's blatantly got this fake like, lightsaber hanging off his belt, and it's, like, on top of his robes. Like, he's really standing out as a fake Jedi, but trying to look like a real one. Uh, he had a weird moment where they looked like they were going to kill the Grand Inquisitor. Which, if you watch any of the animated series, you know that he is alive in the Star Wars Rebels, which takes place about five years after this show. So a lot of people are like, is this show kind of, sh is Kenobi kind of shitting on canon for some of the cartoons? Or is it doing something different? Obviously, he came back at the end. Um, I think, if you don't watch the cartoon, you could care less what happens to the Grand Inquisitor. But if you watch the cartoon, you're like, wait a minute, you told us this guy was going to do this, and now you're saying he's not? But again, uh, they rectified it. Um, they have this big fancy sequence where Anakin's in the tank and then they sh he gets all his Vader armor put on him. I think it kind of looked, I didn't really care for how it looked. I thought it looked kind of cheesy. I don't know. I was expecting something cooler than what we got. I was a little worried that we are going to start seeing all these things of Obi-Wan imagining Anakin as he was when he knew him last because there was one shot of him doing it. Luckily, it was just the one scene. Just another, you know, chance for him to use Hayden. Got an interesting backstory where we find out Kenobi had a, presumably had a brother at some point. I'm assuming he doesn't have the Force, otherwise he would have been sent to the Jedi as well. But that could be a potential season two story arc where he, you know, he meets his family. 
I got a kick out of the scene where the stormtrooper fell on the laser gate and got ch chopped in half. Uh, Vader throwing a wing went through that fire seems like it should have did a lot more damage than it did. I, I know they didn't want him to be supercharged, but just the way they shot it, he looked like he should have been way worse off. He should have did a little bit different. And then it seemed like Vader could have just easily got him from the other side of the fire when they were going to rescue him, but he just kind of let him go, which was, seemed kind of out of character. Nice to see the Fortress Inqu Inquisitorius, and they actually called it by that, and they said it was on Nur. If you played Jedi Fallen Order, you'd be geeking out of these scenes. Even Obi-Wan having to swim to get in, it's just what you gotta do in the game, so that was really cool. Um, it's kind of cool they're also seeing Kenobi get into this groove. You start seeing that classic Kenobi coming back, getting his lightsaber seals back, getting his force back. Um, I, don't, I don't know how I felt about the tune with all the Jedis and Amber. Like, uh, they looked like they were alive, but they were they really alive when they put them in the Amber? Did they, because they kind of looked shocked and they had their eyes open? Did they kill them some other? I don't know, it was a little vague. It almost looked more like they were suspended animation than dead, but he called it a tomb. That's a nitpick about that scene. Seemed a little more random seeing the uh, snow speeders. I know technically they're not really snow speeders, they're just speeders. They yeah, gave some kind of air speeders. And he said it was cool seeing them again, but I don't know. It felt like that was just kind of thrown in there just for the fans, which it's not bad. I can't really complain about it that much. It didn't really take away from the show. Um, definitely like the scene of Vader pulling the ship out of the sky. The CG looked a little wonky on the ship, but it was such a badass scene, it didn't matter. I've seen a lot of people complaining that this other ship takes off right afterwards, and he should have grabbed that as well. I think just, it's just the way they filmed it. I think they wanted to show the audience that this ship was hiding back there and got out. But they had to do a way where it looked like Vader still could have grabbed it, just for clarity's sake. And I don't know why Vader let third sister live at the end like he she already survived that the first time i don't know why he let her survive a second time unless he thought she'd have some kind of future use which seemed to imply that she didn't even the grand inquisitor didn't even you know recommend killing her so i don't that was kind of a weird mercy move which goes in the finale as well obviously vader's got to survive but only one had a chance to finish him off and save the galaxy a lot of heartache and he just walked away and let him live uh, i love the scene of seeing the helmet cracked open um it was basically ripped off from the Star Wars Rebels cartoon where Ahsoka did the same thing. Almost a oh, very similar scene, but just seeing that in live action was pretty cool, even though it was basically a redo. And I know if their sister was hurt, but it was kind of weird seeing her like almost get taken out by a couple like random, you know, farmers basically. You know, they pretty well hold it. They held their own against her pretty good. And I, actually, Owen almost took her head off with that first shot. So I I didn't think they were trying to show she was hurt, but you know, Kyler Ren took a bowcaster shot to the to the abdomen and he was still able to hold up, fight off Finn and hold his own against Ray for a while, almost beat her, you know, the Force Awakens. Um, you gotta love the little hello there from Kenobi when he meets Luke, and of course, we all suspected it was coming. It was really set up throughout the whole series, but super awesome seeing Kwai Jan Jin show up. Probably got Jin show up because it's one of those characters that's really cool. We only got to really see him in the one movie and then he, they killed him off. It was always great to bring back a fan favorite character. I think it was a really emotional moment for you know, Obi-Wan finally connect, finally getting to the point where he sees his old master and he can move forward. But I think that's about it. You know, I had a lot to say. I like Star Wars, so I like to talk about it. Um, on that, um, I got the somewhat spoiler free version of this up on my blog i got other reviews on there i got my comic strips so if you want to check that out sound better my head.com other than that thanks for watching